humanity capable of leaving the present moment and unable to embrace the future. Remember when there were no MP3s but CDs? Didn't care about germs, no concern of disease. Street lights came on, we high five and we leave. Back in the days, it wasn't so hard to believe that I would wake up as the Black Power Ranger. Never scared of danger, snapping my fingers to the beat of my drum. Became addicted to fun, we would fight with our hands. Never needed a gun, we would gladly chill in the house, play mom and daddy. The greatest feeling was when nobody could ever tag me. So happy, not being the last to be chosen. The run to the candy lady to buy us a frozen. We was just kids up to no good. Remember the first time you watched boys in the hood? Rat tail in the back while my barber faced me. Do you remember when? Yes, no, remember baby. When you were the end song you liked and you felt like it was about your life. Remember when you would write a letter to your girlfriend and she would read it to all of her girlfriends. Remember staying up for all night, talking all the phone. Remember skip the class with your homeboys. Yeah. Hey, yo, I hope you shiver yeah. all day A long stay in the hallway Harking back to an era of the tape play Hitting on the track well On the max cell With the spitting the beginning of a rap tale A last to scoop the loop shine vividly In due time produce rhyme synergy And for the longest caught the blinking of the torment So England of performance still thinking of his dormant And so it be who hold close and kept dear We're left there, won't know folks by next year For ties cut, invest years, perplex peers Rise up, reflect fear, for hex sneers The rest cheer, know we did it for a purpose Poem of a kid, who never did scratch surface Until we own it, respect the craft for proponents Cause it ain't over to the soul Remember what? You were the ass song you like, and you felt like it was about your life. Remember when you would write a letter to your girlfriend, and she would read it to all of her girlfriends. Remember staying up far all night, talking on the phone. Remember skipping class with your homeboys. Remember G.I. Joe's. I used to play Mortal Kombat with Matt. I swore he used to cheat. I swear I could never be. No sour jawbreakers, I swear I could never be. Baddest chick in the school, I swear I could never be. Until I wrote a letter telling her I'm a singer. Me and Terrence would draw pictures of sneakers. Me and Ashley used to be in the class singing. I wrote my first rap in the back of the class thinking, um, I'm feeling it, yeah. Feel the high that you get from the lie. If you feel it, raise your hell in the sky. Uh, I remember selling my mixtape to high school. They was really kind of supportive at my school. I was selling cassette tapes for five dollars. I was making my own beats. I was beatboxing. Brown, brown sugar, that brown, but brown eight. 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 like Wizard of Oz. Let me go ahead and turn off that audio. Hey, everybody. Nice to be here. I'm kind of psyched. Uh, making sure the audio is good. Checking the levels. Um, everything seems to be fine. Yeah, we are definitely ready to go. And hopefully the little dashboard here is working. Man, I'm excited for today. You know why? Because the world has gone bat poop crazy. I guess we're talking about coronavirus coronavirus we are talking about bat poop crazy but man some of the stuff i'm seeing today it's absolutely nuts as the country is about to take a turn as we're about to get to reopening things and getting stuff ready and making some money 
man, I, I, I am just so psyched and I want to help you guys get through this transition as soon as possible. I mean, it's amazing. Again, let's see if the, the button worked and it works and that's me. I'm Barry Cunningham. I'm here five nights a week, God willing. And I'm going to just keep bringing it as much as I can, grow this audience. I don't know if you guys have checked the numbers, but we are growing. We're heading to 700 fans. That's roughly 100 new fans per day. So, you know, at the end of 30 days, we're going to be looking pretty good, maybe a couple thousand. But tell everybody, tell everybody because by the time we get back and everything's reopened, yeah, we're, we're going to be doing well and we're going to get you guys some fun stuff and actually get moving on some things. So just real quick, let me get the introductions out of the way. I am working for AXA help. We're, we're, we're bringing people help with, you know, whoever needs attorneys. If you need a, a doctor, if you need a, a lawyer, if you need medical treatment after being in a car accident, if you need an attorney to fight for your rights and seek compensation, give us a call. I mean... Seriously, we have some attorneys right now that are just, I call them pit bulls. I'm going to continue to call them pit bulls because these attorneys will fight to get you every single dime that you deserve. And we have some of the best doctors in South Florida, Orlando, Tampa, even all the way up to Tennessee, uh, Fort Myers, all of South Florida, Orlando, everything from brain traumatic injuries, brain trauma, to car accidents, to you name it, extremities, we'll get you fixed up, we'll get you back and ready to work, ready to rock and to, you know, basically live life down here in South Florida. Now, it's funny because just today, we're with, uh, you know, personal injury attorneys and things of that nature, but we got a, a message through Facebook where somebody who has lost their job, and yesterday I told people I would help them find a job, and I mean that, and this person also is going through a family custody battle and needs a attorney to help them, uh, you know, regain her, her child support that she hasn't been paid for like the last three years, deadbeats. And although we don't work with a lot of personal attorneys, I mean, family attorneys closely, I personally know some really good family attorneys. I know some attorneys who know some other attorneys who are good personal uh, family attorneys as well. And all I'm saying with that is, although we are our, our main lane is working with people who are in accidents, if you need help, don't hesitate to hit us a message or give us a call. We'll find a way. And if we can't find a way, we'll let you know. But I'm not going to leave anybody hanging. Now, a lot of the attorneys that we work with who deal with accident type cases, there's different ways they can do it where it doesn't cost anything potentially, but a family law attorney may need to figure out how they're going to be compensated. So you're gonna really have to talk directly to them, but don't feel bad about giving us a call and talking to us about anything. Um, you know, we're here to help. Bottom line, AXA help. Accidents, but help too. So if you need help, uh, with any situation, even in drunk driving or something. I know some people who handle that. I mean, God knows we are in South Florida. So, But anyway, that's who we are. That's who I am. And uh, I'm just excited to be here. This is a whole different day. And I'm just going to jump into the numbers real quick here, okay? You want to jump to the numbers so we can get into some good stuff? So today, as of right now, 614 people have... Uh, succumbed to the coronavirus if we're to believe these numbers but let's just for the sake of argument believe this that 614 people have lost their lives to the coronavirus but as i've been telling you every single night since i've gotten on here every single night what you have to do what you really have to do is look at that trend line and, and as you see yesterday um it dropped it dropped substantially it just basically fell off the cliff. And so now you're starting to see people start to freak out because we actually might reopen and we might actually get back to doing business. And so when you see that kind of stuff, you have to wonder what's what's in their, their mind, what's their basic intent? Because uh, we see this every night I show you guys, 
And as of right now, there's been 215,000 tests. And you can always go back and check the previous episodes. I've been doing this religiously every single day. And 22,000, oops, excuse me, 22,000 uh, positive, 191,000 negative. And we're still, as the numbers climb, if you didn't know anything about math, if, if the bigger your sample size is, which is the total test, the bigger your sample size, and that means the more people we end up testing. If we're still holding at that 10, 11%, that means we're not seeing additional problems here. We have stabilized. And you can go back over the last four or five days when we've done these shows, as I touch my face, we're not supposed to, but it, it's a nice face. It's a nice face. Um, we're at 10.5%, and it only stayed at 10.5%. Maybe once in a while it'll go up 11, 11, 2, but it's right back down to uh, 10.5. So as you dig into these numbers, and, and we can continue to look at them, um, we're seeing that most of the state is fine. I wouldn't say fine. They're okay. But they can reopen. There's no reason to keep these 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 other counties closed. We're going to have to have some sort of staggered uh, approach here in you know Miami Dade, Palm Beach, and Broward. That's okay. But it, let's get going on this. Let's get get moving into the realm of beginning to you know bring it back, bring back the economy. So in that regard, in talking about the economy. I have a couple questions for you. Actually, it's one big question. And if you're watching live, go ahead and leave it in the comments. And if you're not, you're watching on demand, go ahead and leave it afterwards. But if we go back, not if, when we go back to work, when the economy turns back on, are you going to look for a job or are you going to sit back and get the government cheese or the government check and soak this thing as long as you possibly can. What kind of an American are you? Hopefully I'm talking to go-getters. Hopefully I'm talking to people who just want to get out there and seize the opportunities that are, that are going to be in front of them. But right now, as I said last night, right now is where you should be positioning yourself to take advantage of these opportunities. Take advantage of what's going to happen and be prepared for it. Don't wait. I'm telling you right now, you're going to turn back and watch this 30 days from now go, damn, I shouldn't have waited. I should have been ready. And I'm going to tell you more about that. But first, what I want to do is get into some of the numbers and what we've been doing. And we're really excited because we've been able to thus far uh, help feeding South Florida raise nearly 26 thousand meals 26,000 remember at feeding south florida every dollar every dollar you you provide and donate directly to them not to us but every dollar you donate to uh, feeding south florida they're able to make eight to ten meals per dollar per dollar raise they can do eight to ten meals and with those eight to ten meals they're they're only feeding people here in south florida so every dollar you give like i said if it's only a dollar every dollar you give is going to feed eight to ten meals for people here in south florida and we've seen the lines in hialeah we've seen some of the problem tomorrow unfortunately we're going to see the unemployment numbers again i've been hearing upwards of another four to seven million people have lost their job people are having a really hard time right now and they need your help and you know i started this show because you know, one, I wanted to help build acts of help. And number two, since we were and we had help in our brand name, I felt, you know what, we might want to start by helping people, especially people here in South Florida. This is where we live. This is where we work. This is where we do business. This is where we employ and we need to give back. So anything you can do to help is greatly appreciated. Your help, you're not doing it to for us, you're doing it for your fellow South Floridians, and you're helping them get food. There's nothing more noble than feeding somebody, helping somebody eat. When you go to sleep tonight, you're you're not gonna. If you're watching this, you're probably not gonna wonder where you're gonna get your next meal come tomorrow morning. I don't have to. You probably don't have to. But there are many, many people here in South Florida who wake up tomorrow and don't know if they're going to be able to feed their kids that night. 
give a buck, give a buck or two, give 10, give 15, give 100, whatever you can afford, click the donate button, please. And uh, let's help, help out some fellow South Floridians. So I'm going to move on to some really crazy stories. And you can tell people have been, you know, locked up in their homes for too long. But this guy decides he wants to blow up the Allison <laughs> Allison Wonderland statue in Central Park. Now that's absolutely insane. And I got my buddy pinging me, get out of here. I don't need your thing right now. Um, absolutely insane that people are, are beginning to do crazy stuff like that and basically go out and, and try to hurt people because for whatever reason, maybe they're nuts. Maybe this coronavirus has gone to the head and they're, and they're just doing crazy things. But can you imagine wanting to blow up a uh, Alice in Wonderland statue in Central Park? That's crazy, crazy talk. And just be careful out there. There's a lot of nuts. Um, I spend a tremendous amount of time on Twitter. Um, I'm what you call an influencer, kind of a big deal on Twitter. But anyway, um, on Twitter, I spend a lot of time I, and I, I talk to people from both persuasions. And if you ever go on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about race. Come on, Jeff, hold off. I'm talking about people who, who have a political ideology and who are crazy about either side. And so I like to get in and just, you know, do some rope a dope, get a mix in there. Um, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts right now on, on both sides. And it's being, obviously, uh, we're seeing it being reflected in stories like this. So be careful out there. There, there are a lot of nutty people running around. And uh, in addition to having to worry about whether or not we're going to get the coronavirus from somebody, walking around looking like bank robbers, just walking in. Imagine going into a bank these days and with sunglasses, a hat, and you've got a mask on. Tellers are like, oh, yeah, that's crazy. But that's what we're doing. We're, we've got mask on. I went into the 7-Eleven today to, oops, to get some gas. And while I was in there, Lord, forgive me, I forgot to have my mask on. And the guy yells at me. And I'm like, hey, dude, I'm just getting some gas. So here's the credit card. Let me pump the gas, and I'll be out of your hair in like 30 seconds. It's crazy out there, and it's going to get crazier politically and with nut jobs trying to blow stuff up. So just be careful. Dodge the disease, dodge the crazies, and let's get ready to open up. So what's going to be the first thing you do when you get back to normal, whatever normal ends up being? So what I'm seeing is that there's there's a it's a crazy stuff going on, and check this out, unlicensed haircut. There's a reason. There's there's a reason right now why I, I, you see me every day with this hat on. It's not it's not not good, man. Not not good. What's going on up here? And I know a lot of the brothers are feeling the same way, looking like the dad from Good Times, just hair everywhere. Looking got that Kunta Kinte style going on. Butt wheat, looking like butt wheat. Man, it's been rough. And I know you ladies feel the same way. I know my wife's itching to get into the salon and get her na her nails taken care of. It's just crazy out there. So what do you want to do as soon as we get back and the market gets going again? Are you looking to get into hairdressing? Are you looking to get your own stuff done? Nails? Hmm. A little drink there. What I see with this, let me get back to the camera. What I see with this is that there's going to be a ton of opportunity. And I don't foresee that you're going to be able to open up a hair salon on May 15th. You, you, if you haven't been a hairstylist, you're not going to be in a position to do that. But there's going to be a flood of business to hair salons barber shops, just a flood of business. They're going to have lines out the door. They have to space this thing every six feet, like they're saying. Well, luckily the chairs are, are spaced out. 
but the line to get in is going to have to be spaced out because when I find out I can go to a hair, hair salon and get this thing taken care of, I'm going to be there and I'll sit in line and sit in the car, wait to get in. But there's your opportunity. If you don't have a job, there's your opportunity. Get into some of these barber shops. They're going to need help. And this is beyond just a person clipping the hairs and doing the nails and everything else. They're going to need people to help clean up these places. They're going to need people to schedule the, the deluge of people that are going to need work. They're going to need people to keep the peace, basically. You know, keep that social distancing line coming in, almost like a nightclub. Next, next, you, 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 you. yeah. It's going to be crazy. I'm telling you right now. Why not go? We know every club, all the good clubs in South Florida, the good restaurants have good valet service. I'm telling you right now, go to some salons. Contact them. Call them now. Tell them you'll do valet at their salon. I'm in Boca. And, and I'm telling you, these women here in Boca ain't playing. Ain't playing. And, and they're not going to want to be around a whole lot of people standing in line searching for a parking space and charging five ten fifteen bucks for some prime parking build yourself a business create a valet service start now get your insurance in line get your shirts get some t-shirts printed up you know barry's valet get going somebody is going to make a f ton a lot of money when this thing opens up and you can be that person first in line. Look at the opportunities. I see this article here today, and I look at this and go, hmm. We're already it's it's on the Atlantic, which is basically almost the New York Times. And they're talking about you know cutting restrictions on on hair salons, veterinary facilities, all kind of facilities are going to need help. And you get yourself to the front of the line. I talked about doing some marketing yesterday. I talked about different ways you can do this stuff. You want to know about this stuff? I'm looking to get some better lighting. I'm looking to get a, a different backdrop. And it has to be mobile so I can take it to the office as well as do it in the home. So much of this stuff is you can't even buy it. It's not even available. If I took it to Amazon right now, you'd, you'd freak out. Everything goes out of stock, out of stock. And let me let me show you this one. This is absolutely crazy. You think you think this is 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 where we're gonna be? Look at this. <sighs> Come on, people. Look at that. Average Americans are streaming, not watching broadcast TV, are streaming eight hours of content per day. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you would sit in front of your computer and watch Facebook and YouTube eight hours per day. I'd, I'd have to slip the wrist. I couldn't do it. But the average American, so I must be below average in terms of content consumption, or at least live content consumption, is watching eight hours of streaming per day. I'm telling you, I predict that live streaming like we're doing right now is going to be the next big business opportunity in the United States. It's going to be crazy. And, and if you don't jump on this, somebody will. This is my seventh broadcast here. And every single day, and I think you're starting to see it, every single day things get a little bit smoother. And I'm getting ready to be able to... Um, enlarge things. I've worked in my, my production desk here, uh, new microphone, I'm working on getting another camera, going to get a better backdrop, it's a different kind of lighting up in here. Every single day I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to learn and train my voice. It's amazing how much you have to train your voice. The first two nights, the next day or right after, I could barely talk. I, I talked for 30 minutes and I could barely talk. Uh, so it, it takes an amount of getting in shape just in terms of your voice to be able to do this for an extended period of time. Now, you're a kid. You're 22, 23 years old. Get out there, man. Make the funny videos. Do the cat videos. Do the dog videos. My dog's sitting here sleeping on my feet. Um, get out there. Just do it. Nike slogan. Just do it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Now, 
here's something for you. If these kids, not just kids, but people are spending eight hours a day watching stream videos on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and everything else, how about if those people, doesn't say what they're watching, what if these people, now ponder this, what if these people were learning to do what I'm doing right now? If we're all starting at the same starting gate and I'm no better than the next person or the person over here or the person over here and we're all starting from the same perspective and you're spending six hours a day looking at cat videos or TikTok and I'm watching videos on how to do this, how to apply my trade, how to get better at what I'm doing, how to get to the next level, level up, and I still see you over here watching cat videos and TikTok, and a week later, I'm going to be way ahead. So I'm asking you, and I'm challenging you, this is a perfect opportunity. We're all locked up. We're like prisoners. We're like lab rats. But you don't have to be. As long as you have an inter internet connection, you could be learning a new skill. You could be learning how to market. You could be learning how to cook. Maybe you want to get a job as a cook in a restaurant. You could be learning how to do landscaping. You could be learning how to, I don't know, open a valet business. There's, there's no shortage of you finding something to do online. And there's no shortage of people willing to teach you online. I call myself a frustrated guitar player. So, you know what? I can click on a button and say, show me beginning chords on a guitar. I can learn how to play guitar. Maybe you can teach. Maybe you're a teacher. And you know what? These kids are sitting at home and they need to learn some things. Well, you can set up a website, do some courses. Boom. You've got a business. Start thinking here, man. Really, seriously. Start thinking up here. And get off the TV. There's no reason why people need to be watching eight hours of content per day recreationally i mean there's nothing wrong i mean yes i do watch some crazy stuff i'm, I'm binging right now myself on the series homeland i never watched it before and now i'm like in season three or four and every waking moment after i'm here or at work or after the wife goes to bed i'm like glued to it and watching some more and going if this is real this woman carrie is bat poop crazy and I can't believe there are people like that in our CIA. Now, you, if you've watched Homeland, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This Carrie chick is gonzo. She's running around the country having nervous breakdowns, sleeping with everybody she can find. And she's supposed to be a top-level CIA agent. It's scary. But the show is funny, so it's entertaining, you know, things like that. Um, Blacklist is back on. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't even watch shows until I have three or four or five episodes already banked into DVR. So I don't sit and watch eight hours of a show, I mean, or, or per day of stream. But I know I watch my, my good share, and a lot of it is learning how to do what I'm doing right now. So moral of the story is don't spend your time so much wondering what you can do as wondering what you can do to make a living to make money because you know one of the things that's that's driving me crazy here um and they're talking about um basically giving people money so one of the groups of politicians have proposed giving people two thousand dollars per month while the coronavirus Notice they never say where this money is going to come from. $2,000 a month. How many people are going to go back to work if they can make $2,000 a month? And then if you see the small print down here as to the eligibility, I don't know if you can read this. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit and help you out. Oh, it's going to blow up too much. But every American adult age 16 and older making less than $130,000 a year is going to get two grand a month. Married couples earning less than two sixty a year are going to get $4,000 a month to do nothing but sit at home and watch cat videos. 
four thousand dollars a month to sit at home four thousand dollars a month to not improve yourself four thousand dollars to not contribute to society four thousand dollars a month to not be a productive member of society it's in friggin sane I, I I can't tell you how much this drives me crazy. Um, it makes me want to scream that there are certain elements of our government who are trying to destroy America by Im imputing complacency, chasing away the American dream. I just wonder how many people would say, hey, I can make $4,000 a month doing nothing, just sitting at home. Or I can get a job that's going to pay me fifteen or fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month, and you're going to see people doing this, and two thousand, four thousand, two thousand, working eight hours a day on my feet, um, slaving for the man, four thousand, sitting at home watching Jerry Springer. This is wrong, people. This is wrong. Provide value. Provide value. Turn yourself into something that is not displaceable. This is a trap. I'm telling you right now, this is a trap. If you wait and forego opportunity when the economy reopens, hoping for that government check, and you, you keep hoping and you keep hoping, it, it's just wrong, man. I mean, I'm watching today on Twitter, and I'm seeing this all day where people are like, hey, listen, I can't get my government check. I can't get it. It's not coming yet. And when you think about that, I, began, I think the lockdown happened right in mid-March, mid-early March. So for the last four to five weeks, these people here, all the ones who are trying to you know, get their checks from the government, have been sitting on their butts for four or five weeks for $1,200. Think about that. Do the math. Do the math yourself and, and think about what that says. Someone is sitting at home waiting for a $1,200 check. Meanwhile, they had a car payment maybe that passed, maybe a new one coming up behind it, rent that passed, another one coming up behind it, and they were dangled $1,200. And it was supposed to be meaningful. What the hell is $1,200 going to do for you in, in an amortized period of time? If it was $1,200 a day, yeah, maybe you're talking something. If it's $1,200 a week, yeah, a lot of people would be interested in that. It's $1,200 every six weeks? That's not living. The reason we live in Florida is because we love the lifestyle. We love the lifestyle of living in South Florida. That's not living. It's a trap. If you become reliant and, and you put your your trust in the fact that you're going to be handed some money, then you are telling yourself and you are telling the world you have no value. That's it. You are worthless. And I need, please, money to fall out of the sky. I need someone to take care of me. I need someone to wipe my butt. I need someone to put some food on a plate. I need someone to help me figure out with a bus pass how I'm going to get from place to place. Now, I'm not talking about people who fall on hard times. Of course, we've all been there. And many of us are, are, are literally right there. I'm talking about depending on money from the government. I'm talking about relying that you're hoping and praying that every month you on the 15th, you see that check. You realize today is April 15th and what has to, was supposed to happen today? Many of us actually had to pay income tax so that you could get a free check. Think about that. How many of you think about that? Somebody is writing a check today so that the government can say, here you go. How many times do you think we all can do this so that the government can do that? How many, just do the math. Hmm, okay. How many times do you think we're all willing to do that? And how much disdain we have for people who sit and do nothing when there's so much opportunity available to you. Now, I'm not going to harp on it. Again, leave a comment if you need some help, you, you need some direction, you need to find out you know, what's going on. 
uh, where, where we can do some, some good together. But I'm going to close with some good news. I want to get your opinion on this. So over here on the site, and we're talking about football. And football is supposed to start in late August, late July, and run through the end of the year. And this knucklehead is telling us that they expect football to be played in empty stadiums. That ain't going to happen. There's too much going on economically at a football game. I'm sure many of you have been at a football game. In addition to enjoying the sport, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, hockey, I don't care. But you've got the people who park the cars, the people who make the food, the people who cut the grass, the people who sweep the seats out, the people who, who, who paint the, the chairs, the guys that work the scoreboards and talk like this all day. ESPN, oh my God, there were seven hours of the spelling bee on this weekend. All those people are depending upon football and baseball and basketball resuming. And I'm depending upon it. I can't wait to head over to Tampa Bay and watch Tom Brady play. You're going to tell me you expect us to sit around in empty stadiums or sit there and just watch it from TV or, or maybe not play at all? Hell no. We got to open this economy back up. And I hope to God that you guys are all set to go. I hope that every one of you are, are ready to take this economy head on. If you have any questions, get out of this herd mentality. Get ready to actually shine. I'm telling you right now, if you put yourself in a position to earn, a position to 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 take advantage of, of the opportunities in front of you, I'll help you find these opportunities if you're willing to roll up your sleeves and get down to it. Don't think about where you are. Uh, the great Wayne Gretzky, hockey player, in case you don't know, has a very famous saying. Never skate to where the puck is. You skate to where the puck is going to be. Just remember that. I showed you a video yesterday from Simon Sinek, and what he said is people don't buy things by what, why you're doing it. Um, in addition to that, you want to do business with people who believe what you believe. Today, day two of this pep talk to get busy is skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it is. Think about that. Write it down. Skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it is. Because by the time you skate to where it is right now, what he's saying to you is the game's already over. They've already moved on. And I left the picture in picture on again because I'm an idiot. But you get the point. Don't stay in one place. Move. Get to where the puck is going to be. Seize the opportunities. And um, I'll help you any way I can. So that was today. I think I made it through almost the whole show without making too many mistakes until I left the picture in picture on at the end. But please forgive me. Talk to you guys tomorrow.